Academic Writing, Lecture 9, Parallelism, Sentence Problems, Sentence Fragments. Learning Objectives To identify parallelism, to describe parallelism with coordinators and or but, to distinguish parallelism with correlative conjunctions, to identify sentence problems, to identify sentence fragments, to identify choppy sentences, to study run-on sentences and comma places, to study stringy sentences, editing practice. Plan of the lecture. Parallelism. Parallelism with coordinators and or but. Parallelism with correlative. Conjunctions. Sentence problems. Sentence fragments. Choppy sentences. Run-on sentences and commas. Places. Stringy sentences. Editing practice. So, so today we are going to talk about the terms parallelism coordinators and or but, correlative conjunction, sentence problems, fragments, choppy, run-on sentences, comma, splices, stringy, editing, practice. So let's talk about parallelism. Parallelism is the use of component in a sentence that are grammatically the same or similar in their construction, sound, meaning or meter. Parallelism examples are found in literary works as well as in ordinary conversations. Parallelism, also known as parallel structure or parallel construction, is a balance within one or more sentences of similar phrases or clothes that have the same grammatical structure. The application of parallelism affects readability and may make texts easier to process. Some additional key details about parallelism. Parallelism can be as simple as choosing grammatically similar elements when writing a list. In some cases, parallelism involves the exact repetition of words, but all that is required to fit the definition of parallelism is the repetition of grammatical elements. Parallelism is a prominent feature of Hebrew and Middle Eastern poetry, and it appears frequently in both the Old and New Testaments of the Bible. The term parallelism is used to describe both a figure of speech and a principle in grammar, although its use in each context is slightly different. So, will you answer the questions, what is parallelism? And why do writers use parallelism? So let's continue. In grammatical terms, two structures are parallel if they have the same grammatical form, both verbs or both nouns. For example, when these coordinators appear in a sentence, the pairs of lists of items they connect must have the same grammatical form. Parallelism with correlative coordinators. The parallel form is used with Correlative conjunctions like both and, either or neither nor, and not only, but also, new laws may be needed both to regulate the use of pesticides and their disposal. When you connect two clothes using a coordinating conjunction, for and nor, but or yet so, make sure that the same grammatical structure is used on each side of the conjunction. Take a look at the following example. Faulty parallelism. When I walk the dog, I like to listen to music and talking to friends on the phone. Correct parallelism. When I walk the dog, I like listening to music and talking to friends on the phone. The first sentence uses two different verb forms to listen talking. In the second sentence, the grammatical construction on each side of the coordinating conjunction and is the same, creating a parallel sentence. The same technique should be used for joining items or lists in a series. Faulty parallelism. This committee needs to decide whether the company should reduce its workforce, cut its benefits or lowering workers' wages. Correct parallelism. 
this committee needs to decide whether the company should reduce its workforce, cut its benefits or lower workers' wages. The first sentence contains two items that use the same verb construction, reduce, cut, and the third item that uses a different verb form, lowering. The second sentence uses the same verb construction in all three items, creating a parallel structure. Coordinating structures of parallel construction in English is based on a repetition of grammatical form. A word can coordinate with the word if it is the same grammatical class. Noun, verb, adjective, adverb, preposition. A phrase can coordinate with a phrase if the head of the phrase is the same grammatical class. Same as brackets above and the clause can coordinate with the clause. Why is coordination necessary in English? Because the brain does not work as hard processing information that is the same in content or structure. Making the information in parallel constructions easier to understand. In addition, repeating words within grammatical structures also has the advantage of establishing focus on the repeating element, as in she wore blue socks, a blue hat and a blue dress, which emphasizes the color blue. Finally, repeating information is in standard subject verb object form can be used to draw attention to another element, as the, in the man who, has standi who was standing at the street corner, the man who was standing at the bus stop and the woman who was standing at the cinema door, also the woman in blue. The focus is on the woman in blue. The detail that one of the people who witnessed the woman in blue is the woman herself is nearly lost in the parallel construction. English is a periphrastic language. Peri means around and periphrastic means that multiple words are used instead of a single inflected word. As a result, coordination of strong structures is difficult and awkward. However, once you have arranged your sentence to be parallel, it is easier to see which element does not fit and reword it so it flows better. You may find you need more specific vocabulary to create a parallel construction. English learners often use too much periphrastic construction and struggle with parallel construction because they lack specific vocabulary. For example, a necessary idea in Smith's theory could be better stated as fundamental to Smith's theory in the structure fundamental to Smith's theory yet previously unknown. The end result is a parallel construction which coordinates fundamental and previously unknown. How do you determine if a phrase is a noun phrase, a verb phrase or something else? Remove words until the main meaning is gone, then put the word back in which really matters. For example, in the clause, the man who was at the end of the pier, the head noun is the noun man, since it absolutely necessary. In the phrase walking to the edge of the dock, the head is the verb walking. If you are struggling, coordinating on clothes, try rewarding and coordinating at a simpler level such as phrase or word level. Short can sometimes be better than long for holding your reader's attention. Coordinating conjunctions such as for and nor but or yet so are used between elements in a parallel construction. The sentence problems that occur most frequently in college students' writing are sentence fragments and run-on sentences. This handout will discuss strategies for identifying and correcting sentence fragments and run-on sentences. A sentence fragment is essentially an incomplete sentence. Problem 1. Run-on sentences and comma splices. In English, a clause is a group of words containing a subject and a verb. A sentence is a clause that expresses uh, choppy sentences. Solutions, if the sentences express equal ideas, use a coordinator to combine them. Choppy sentences, solutions, correct. 
sentences are made when we string words together to convey a complete thought. There are some types of sentence errors that occur more frequently than others. It's important to know the most common types of errors and to avoid them in your writing. The commas please. Some say the commas please is the most common type of sentence error, but that should be good news for you. The commas please is an error that is easy to identify and fix. A comma please occurs when two independent clothes are jumped together with a comma. So let's talk about sentence problems. Top 10 problems. First, phrase fragments. A sentence has to have a subject and a verb. A phrase can lack a subject and a verb, but a complete sentence needs both. Find phrase fragments and edit to include each in a sentence that contains a subject and a verb. Faulty. She never talks about her inner feelings, her feelings of fear or of joy. Revised. She never talks about her inner feelings of fear or of joy. Second, clause fragments. A dependent clause must always be connected to an independent clause. If you begin a sentence with a subordinating conjunction such as when, because, or although, connect that clause to an independent clause. Faulty. The play failed because it received three bad reviews. Revised. The play failed because it received three bad reviews. Third. Run on sentences or comma splices. Separate or revise independent clothes that are run together. Faulty. He trained hard. He never considered the strain. Revised. He trained hard. He never considered the strain. Faulty. The film has been released. However, it has not come to our theater. Revised. The film has been released. However, it has not come to our theater. Father syntax. Look for sentences that might make a reader say how they are. These are sentences that begin in one way and end in another, mixing constructions. Your reader should be able to tell clearly who is doing what. Faulty. In the essay notes of a native son by James Baldwin discusses. Revised. In the essay notes of a native son. James Baldwin discusses. James Baldwin becomes the subject of the verb discusses. Wrong verb forms. Check that all the verb forms you have used are standard verb forms. Avoid non-standard forms like has went, should, uh, went, have been, noticed, have drunk. Tense shifts. Avoid flip-flopping back and forth between past and present time. Past and present time. Faulty. The author wrote about the civil war and describes the battles. The author writes about the civil war and describes the battles. Lack of subject verb agreement. Singular third person subjects. He, she, it, or a singular noun need a singular verb with an S ending in the present tense. Check carefully for verbs with S endings. Look for and edit non standard forms. Faulty. My friends likes. Revised. My friends like. Faulty. She don't. Revised. She doesn't. Faulty pronoun case and reference. Check that subject and object pronouns are correct and avoid ambiguous of unclear pronoun references. Faulty. Me and my sister went to Florida. Revised. My sister and I went to Florida. Faulty. The incident in the story reminds me of my mother and I. Revised. The incident in the story reminds me of my mother and me. Faulty. When Dean and George crossed the border with two friends, they searched all their luggage. Revised. When Dean and George crossed the border with two friends, customs officers searched all the luggage. 
Ninth, adjective adverb confusion. Use the right forms of adjectives and adverbs in the right place. Faulty, they did real good in the playoffs. Revised, they did really well in the playoffs. Double negatives. Double negatives can be vibrant in speech and are customary in some dialects, but avoid them in formal writing. Faulty, they don't have no problems with that. Revised. They don't have any problems with that. Faulty. He can't hardly wait. Revised. He can hardly wait. Computer grammar checkers will alert you to possible grammar problems, but they are not infallible. While you should use a grammar checker if you feel you need to, you should not automatically act on every suggestion. A fragment is an incomplete sentence that is incorrectly punctuated, as if it were a complete sentence. A sentence other than a comment must contain a subject, or a complete verb, and an independent clause. Advertisers and writers occasionally use fragments deliberately for a crisp, immediate effect. What a luxury should be. Sleek lines, efficient in rain, sleet and snow. A magnificent film. However, you should identify and correct them in your formal writing. Run-ons and commas places. Identification. So let's talk about run-ons and commas places. If two independent clothes run together without any punctuation between them, the error is called a run-on sentence or fused sentence. If only a comma appears between them with no coordinating conjunction, the error is called a comma splice. A comma splice error also occurs when a comma and a transitional expression join two independent clauses. Examples the first independent clause is italic and the second is plain text. Run on a few sentences to independent clauses. My mother's name is Marta, my father's name is George. Success is their goal, happiness comes a close second. Commas pleases two independent clauses, the comma is not sufficient. The train picked up speed, the scenery flashed by. Some parents support bilingual education, however many oppose it vociferously. Run-ons and commas pleases methods for correction. You can correct run-ons and commas pleases in the following five ways. Select one that works best for the sentence you are editing. Method 1. Separate the two independent clauses into two sentences with a period or question mark or exclamation point if required. Faulty. Success is their goal. Happiness comes a close second. Success is their goal. Happiness comes a close second. Revised. Method 2. Separate the two independent clothes with a semicolon if the clothes are joined by a transitional expression or if their ideas are closely related. Faulty. Some parents support bilingual education, however many oppose it vociferously. Revised. Some parents support bilingual education, however many oppose it vociferously. Method 3. Separate the two independent clothes with a comma and coordinating conjunction, and, but, or no, so, for, yet. Faulty. My mother's name is Marta, my father's name is George. Revised. My mother's name is Martha and my father's name is George. Method 4. Make one clause dependent on the other by adding a subordinating conjunction. Faulty. The beavers dreamt up the river, the rise in the water level destroyed the trees. Revised. Whenever the beavers dumped up the river, the rise in the water level destroyed the trees. The fifth method. Make one clause into a phrase containing an ink form and attach it to the remaining independent clause. For example, faulty, 
Salmon swim upstream, they jump over huge dams to reach their destination. Revised. Salmon swim upstream, jumping over huge dams to reach their destination. So let's talk about a stringy sentence. A stringy sentence is a sentence that is usually difficult to read and understand because it has too many clauses, often due to an overuse of coordinating and or subordinating conjunctions. A stringy sentence is a sentence that has too many ends. A stringy sentence is more than one sentence joined together by end. You have to break a stringy sentence into shorter sentences. Each shorter sentence should have a naming part and an action part. A stringy sentence is made up of several complete thoughts strung together with the words like and so or but. Stringy sentences are so long that the reader forgets and the beginning of the sentence before reaching the end. To fix a stringy sentence, you can break the sentence into two or more sentences. Turn some of the complete thoughts into phrases or subordinate clauses. For example, My best friend's name is Ruta and he lives next door and so we do many things together. Revised. My best friend's name is Wuta, he lives next door, we do many things together. It is an undeniable fact that writing skill has a very significant place in the field of foreign language learning and teaching. That is why it must be handled with care. In order to realize this, one has to be careful about some concern like semantics, pragmatics, syntax and alike. Learners should not commit mistakes on such problematic points. One of these problematic points is syntax which simply focused on word order in sentences. In this syntax matter run on sentences, sometimes called fused sentences and stringy sentences are some problematic points that come out as mistakes of learners. But what are they? A run-on sentence is defined as a sentence which joins two independent clauses or sentences with no punctuation or conjunction between them. Sometimes they occur from misuse of punctuation marks as well. For example, run-on. I like spinach, I like lettuce. Correct. I like spinach, I like lettuce. Correct too. I like spinach and I like lettuce. Next, I like spinach and lettuce. I like spinach, I like lettuce. In a stringy sentence, many independent clauses are joined together with coordinating conjunctions. They are longer than they should be. For example, she goes to the library early in the morning on Saturdays and she stays there till 5 p.m. but she never gets bored there, so she must like libraries. It's correct. She goes to the library early in the morning on Saturdays and she stays there till 5 p.m. but she never gets bored there, so she must like libraries. So, will you answer the questions? What is parallelism? Why do writers use parallelism? What are the conditions of coordinating a word with a word, a phrase with a phrase? What is comma? Please. And um, sources which you can use to prepare for your practical lessons.